Blade has been officially revealed and he is going to be our first limited 5 star character in the new 1.2 patch. It looks like a crazy unique wind destruction character. Instead of dealing damage based on his attack stat, he's going to deal more damage based on his HP stat. And so he's all about consuming his own HP to deal pretty much wind AoE damage to his targets. He's kind of like a destruction erudition character hybrid. He's also able to do all of this without being super skill point reliant. And so he's looking like a pretty solid win DPS character and also his Eidolons well, just give him even more damage. And I'm actually quite happy about that because they didn't lock any kind of new playstyle mechanics behind them. And also, he's not just a 5-star Wind Arlen. He is certainly different from Arlen's kit. So what exactly does this... Well, apparently, nice quiet boy who gets Kafka to whisper into his ear. Damn, Blade living the dream of like 90% of the Star Rail community. Bruh. Actually do. Blade's playstyle is all about his special hellscape state and the enhanced basic attack that comes from it. So to understand how it works, let's go ahead and start with his skill. When using his skill, it will consume 30% of his HP to enter the hellscape state. And it increases his damage output by about 30% at talent level 7. It turns his basic attacks into enhanced attacks. The special state lasts 3 turns and he can't activate the skill again until it actually runs out. And also just like Arlen's skill, if he doesn't have enough HP to activate it, he'll just go to 1 HP. Now a couple of other notes about this skill is that now unlike Arlen's skill, Blade does require a skill point to enter the state. However, the turn doesn't end immediately and so you're able to fire off your enhanced attack immediately right after. Using the skill also does not gain him any energy. However, your enhanced attacks will generate a little bit extra energy. Equivalent to that of using a skill like any other character, you should be generating 30 energy instead of 20. So now let's move on to the enhanced attack. The enhanced attack Forest of Swords. So it consumes about 10% of its HP and then deals damage, which scales off of a combination of his attack and HP, but the scaling is much more based on his HP. At talent level 4, it's 32% of his attack and 80% of his HP. The enhanced attack also hits adjacent enemies at lower scaling, at about 40% of the potency of the selected target. When he uses his enhanced attack, it also doesn't generate any skill points, so you'll need some team members that like to use basic attacks to keep your skill point pool Popped up. However, it's good that the hellscape state lasts three turns. So thankfully, he doesn't seem very super skill point reliant. And as a rule of thumb, any ability that seems to consume HP, if it were to kill the character, it doesn't kill the character, it will just leave them with one HP. And so this ability behaves the same way. Now let's take a simple calculation. A blade with 6,932 HP, 1,837 attack, 121% crit damage, a wind damage planar ornament sphere, giving him an extra 38.8% extra wind damage, at talent level 7, which gives us an extra 29.5% extra damage bonus, and then if he's level 80 versus another level 80 enemy, and also if they were weak to the element, his crit damage hit is about 11,596, and then his AoE damage is about 4,638. This is a very simple calculation without any other kinds of buffs from any of your other teammates. Now let's move on to his ultimate. His ultimate will set his current HP to 50%, then deals damage that scales off of the sum of his attack, HP, and HP lost during the battle. Now note that it says that it sets his current HP to 50%, so this means that he can either heal or hurt himself. If he's above 50% HP, he will hurt himself. If he's below 50% HP, then he will heal himself. You can use the ultimate almost like an emergency heal if the situation calls for it. However, doing it this way will not give Blade a charge for his talent. The scaling on this at around talent level 7 is 34% of his attack, 85% of his HP, and 85% of the HP lost, but is capped at 90% of his max HP. And so at full power, it's 34% of his attack, 85 of his HP, and then another 90 of his HP. The HP lost scaling will reset after he uses his ultimate, and then it gets recalculated after the ultimate is used. So in order to get the full power from this ultimate, you really want the enemies to be targeting Blade as much as possible. But currently in the game, there's not really too many ways to increase aggro, and March is not a good idea for Blade because you want him to lose HP. So getting full power out of his ultimate is going to be pretty hard, at least for now, until Lynx comes out because she has an ability that is going to synergize very well with Blade. The ultimate also does AoE damage to adjacent targets at about 40% of the potency of the selected target. Overall, it's a solid ultimate, however, I think it's going to be pretty difficult to get the full power out of it. 
In my opinion, we'll mostly want to be using the ultimate just for the lowering of his HP so that we can trigger our talent more often. And so let's move on to Blade's talent. Whenever he consumes his HP or takes damage, he gets a stack of charge. Once five stacks have been reached, he unleashes a follow-up attack. At talent level 7, this is a scaling of about 38% of his attack and 89% of his HP. He then restores 25% of his HP. So Blade has a pretty good solo sustain ability. And so what counts as taking damage or consuming his HP? Well, basically any dot damage that he takes, any AoE damage that he takes, his skill, his ult, his enhanced attack, they will all give him a charge on his talent. The exception is on his ult if you used it when he was below 50% HP since he will heal instead of taking damage, as I mentioned earlier. And surprisingly, you'll be getting charges pretty fast. Five seemed like a lot to me at start, but the more I think about it, I think we get charges pretty quickly. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there isn't a good way to increase Blade's aggro value so that he gets hit more consistently. That is until Lynx comes out. She's got a skill that synergizes perfectly with this. And also I forgot to mention, just like a lot of other follow-up attacks, this talent does regenerate a little bit of energy. As of right now, it's 10 energy, but that might change at the time of release. Now let's move on to Blade's traces. His traces are all about HP and crit rate, so this is kind of nudging you in the direction that Blade should be built for HP. And that is true. According to my calculations, you'll definitely want to be building Blade for HP and not attack in order to get the most out of his abilities. Blade also has several other special traces. His first one is that when his HP is at 50% or lower, incoming healing increases by 20%. His second one is that if Blade hits a weakness broken enemy after using Force of Swords, his enhanced attack, he will restore HP equal to about 5% of his HP plus 100. And considering that Blade is going to be built for a lot of HP, we're probably going to see like 6,000 plus HP. 5% of 6,000 is about 300. So we'll be healing at least 400 if Blade hits a weakness broken enemy after using his enhanced attack on them. And then his last trace is that the damage dealt by his talent's follow-up attack is increased by 20%, so just extra damage. And actually, his talent has the best scaling out of all of his abilities if we're not counting the HP lost from his ultimate. So an extra 20% on this is pretty good. And so Blade is a pretty straightforward character. There were a couple of questions that I had about him, but I was able to find the answer for. I answered them already earlier in the video, but basically it was around his skill and whether or not it took a skill point. Turns out it does, and then using his enhanced attacks do not regenerate skill points. That was the main question I had about his kit. So now that that part of his kit has been answered, I hope that that helps other people as well, because I think this was a pretty common question about how his abilities worked. Now, a question that I have seen a lot of lately is, do you need Locha if you want to play Blade? Locha definitely helps because of his auto heal, and whenever Blade ults, Locha will automatically trigger every time. At least he should, unless Blade has an uneven HP number, and then when it gets halved, if it rounds up. Not 100% sure about this one yet, but Hoyoverse usually rounds down, so we should always be hitting that 50% whenever we use, when we use our ult. So you don't technically need him, but Locha does synergize perfectly. You get more control on Locha's auto trigger heal and also more energy, because you don't have to rely on the enemies dealing damage to your party. Blade. Really, he just wants to stay alive, but he also just has so much HP. Having his HP puts him at the HP of most of your other characters because his HP is going to reach at least 6,000 plus. Honestly, any healer is going to do just fine. We only really need to worry about him is when he gets dangerously low, but even then he has some built-in healing and he also receives extra healing with his traces. Remember that when his HP is below 50%, his incoming healing increases by 20%. 20% is pretty massive. So Natasha and Bailu should be just fine in keeping him alive. And Bailu actually has an ability to increase the max HP of Blade, increasing his damage output. So there's actually a little bit of synergy right there. But Locha is basically just going to be able to top Blade off every time with his auto heal. Combined with Locha's already massive amount of healing, and then the extra 20% healing that Blade gets from his traces, yeah, Blade's just gonna get fully healed every time that auto heal gets triggered. Being a wind type character means that he has really good matchups against certain enemies. The Arumaton Gatekeeper, Svarog, Kafka, 
Decaying Shadow and the Disciple of Medicus Shapeshifter are all weak to wind. So Blade's matchup against those types of enemies are going to be really strong. So if you're struggling with those enemies, Blade is definitely a good pull. Blade will also be getting an artifact set and a planar ornament set that synergizes perfectly with his kit. So he's going to get even more power. The new relic set gives him more max HP, about 12%. And then whenever Blade is hit or consumes his HP, his crit rate can increase up to 16%. And then for the planar ornament set, it just gives him an extra 8% crit rate. And then when he has a crit rate of 70% or higher, his basic attack and skill damage increase by 20%. Now basic attack and enhanced attack should fall under the same umbrella. So his enhanced attack, Force of Swords, should get the 20% damage bonus. And I'm sure everyone is wondering how he compares to Sila. And yeah, I'm just not going to get into that right now. Don't want to start any Doom posting, if you know what I mean. I was also taking a look at his light cone versus the four star option shared vow, but I'm not sure about the interest on that, so let me know down in the comments if you are. Otherwise, I have a similar analysis for Kafka right here, and if it's not there yet, it will be.